Hi everyone, welcome to Code Kamkaj YouTube channel. I hope everybody are doing good. In the last video, we had discussed about simple, uh, you know, simple uh, GitHub Actions pipeline. And today's video, we are going to discuss about how to deploy a Flask framework uh, and Python return application uh, deployment to uh, GitHub Actions. So stay tuned to this video. And if you like my explanation, I request you to like, share, subscribe to Code Kamkaj. So first, I'll walk you through the code and later I'll walk you through the uh, YAML file that we have written for GitHub Actions. And later we'll see how we can deploy a, in a simple way of you know, um, Flask application. So if you see this one uh, into this GitHub uh, page, so we have the app.py where I have written all the core logic of the Flask application. And it will be simple. Uh, this is the uh, message we are going to print on browser whenever you, we hit the, this respective deployment. So the browser name is you are welcome. And uh, if you see this one, like, you know, we have written some few test cases, like, you know, where we are going to integrate and call that respected function. And uh, here we have the requirement.txt because uh, we are going to deploy into remote host. So that's why it's necessary to uh, add your requirement.txt if you are using virtual environment. And basic readme.md, so it does not have anything. And here we have the uh, uh, pipeline as a code uh, where I have written .github and workflows. In that, I have mentioned deploy.yaml file, where it's uh, official as YAML file. And here, if you see this one, like, you know, here I have integrated uh, the similar way of what we have seen in the last video. But it's only specific to the Flask application, which were written in Python language. So this is my workflow name, deploy Flask app. And uh, this is the event. Whenever I push changes into main branch, it will create the event, which means running the pipeline. And here I have the environment available. I have specified as global, which is health sex URL. So whenever I did a deployment, so I'm going to automate the pipeline. It, the pipeline itself will go and hit this uh, respected uh, IP address along with the port number. It will get the status code, which is OK, or uh, internal error, or server side error kind of things. So here I have a two jobs. The one job is a build test deploy, and the other one is the health. And in this build test deploy, I have been running the entire um, you know job on runner, which, is, which we call a self-hosted runner, and that's why I mentioned run so on. And here I have the steps. In that steps, I have integrated a few tasks. So if you call this step by step, like you know, the first one is a checkout code, and which is the reusable component, which is checking out the code. And second task, I have been added setting up the Python. So I have specified the version, which is 3.9. That's why I added the width Python iPhone version 3.9. And the next, I have been um, like you know, creating a virtual environment. So that's why I name it as a virtual ENV. And I have been installing the virtual ENV first and uh, Python 3. And after that, I have been uh, like you know creating the virtual environment. And source, I have been activating the virtual environment. And the next step, I have been installing the dependencies. So for that, I have been installing the pip. So if the pip has not been upgraded, so it will get upgraded. And here I have been running the like requirement.txt. So which means like, you know, whatever uh, uh, requirement.txt file which resides inside of our root directory, we are going to call that requirement.txt and we are running uh, like, you know, that file and it will install all the dependencies like Flask framework and, you know, any other uh, modules are required to run your source code. So before deploying it, so we are going to run it. And after that, I have been uh, calling them the task, which is the testing of my uh, source code. So that's why I've written the test app.py. And it will test all the required, uh, like in a unit test and all. So it will test it. And the next, I have been deploying in the task. So this is a deploy flash task. In that, I have been uh, running one command, nohop, which we run the entire command in the background, which is not making it up. Uh, disturbable for pipe, pipelines or your server. So that's why whenever you do deployment, so we are going to run the uh, entire uh, session in the background. So that's why I added this, uh, like, you know, command. Know how Python 3 app.py. So even you can run directly without know how, but, you know, whenever you run it, so your pipeline will be stuck or your entire server will be in the back end. It will be stuck the respected process. It may be unresponsive for other tasks. So that's why I've been running the entire task in the background. So I hope it is make uh, clear, like, you know, whatever uh, um, things we have integrated into your pipeline. So this is very specific to our Python code. So if we are using any other stacks like Java, .NET, so the commands would be vary. And, you know, even the Python is an interpreter language, so it doesn't require a build. So that's why I have, you know, set up all the basic environment. So if you are using Java, so it's required to build your uh, 
uh, artifacts and you know you can test it and you can deploy it so it's vary from one stack to another stack but the the flow is simple and same for all these stacks so this is what for build test deploy and once this all the uh, you know uh, test has been completed so here i have another test called as a health so in that i have been specified the uh, needs so this uh, snippet related to like you know dependable on the build test deploy which means until unless this job has succeeded so this health job won't be triggered so once this job has succeeded build it as deploy then only this job will trigger and this job has been running on the same runner which is a self-hosted and here i have uh, uh, steps and in that i have been adding one task which is this uh, shell scripting is going to connect to the health sex url so this is my public ip address of my server and this is the port number so that, that is calling from the global variable and accordingly it will check the 200 okay status code and accordingly it will give a change uh, it will give a response on your cli so the reason why I mentioned HealthSec because once the deployment is done, so we don't need we do not need to go manually and check the URL. So it's it's a best practice to check your HealthSec of your deployment via pipeline. And uh, as for this entire uh, uh, workflow, so this is not a productionized. So it's it, there are other best practices we can use it to deploy it. Like you can use nginx, you can use a unicorn uh, servers, and you can deploy it. So it's up to your requirement how would like to make it is more productionized. So I just want to make more clear, like, you know, in terms of basic level, that's why I brought it. And even it's such a simple uh, package based deployment and, you know, we just we just cloning uh, all the, um, you know, uh, required files and we're just running it. So there are best practices where we can implement it via container based deployment like Docker, Rocket and Container D. And, you know, we can make our pipeline more kind of robust and more productionizable. And even you can use different kinds of, you know, uh, you know, components that we can automate while you are handling with such a productionized deployment. So I just want to make you just basic understanding of how we can write these simple, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, GitHub Actions pipeline. So that's why I brought this, uh, you know, steps. So uh, let's see, like, you know, uh, here we have the source code and, you know, we can go to our Actions tab. So here I have ran a few jobs before making this video, but what I will do, I'll just make a simple change into my main branch. So it can be any change. So it will, it has to trigger the uh, pipeline. So I just add one space. So I just added, added one space into my deploy.yaml file. I don't want to make any other changes because I already made all the changes and, you know, it's ready to create a pipeline. So what I will do, I just added one uh, small commit. So the commit was just as I have added a simple space. So whenever I push these changes into main branch, so here we can expect a new pipeline to be run. That's what our pipeline has to be, right? So that's what we have uh, seen in, in the, uh, like in our workflows as an event. So if I, I'm going to the action tab, so if I re, re, uh, reload it, so it has been created one pipeline. So first it is doing the build test deploy and later it will go for health. So next second job, if I open this job, so if you see this one, so it has been like checking out the code, set up the pipe, uh, Python environment, virtual entities, and install dependencies, run test cases, and you know, it deploy the Flask application, and it has done all its jobs, and it is went for the health uh, job also. If you see this one, so this is the health jobs. Like we have ran some script in the and uh, in this respected job called a shell script. So it will go and hit the respected URL, which is the this is the URL, and it will get the two hundred. Okay, okay. So if you go each line of the uh, like you know log, so checking out the code, and first it is setting up the job. This is my runner version, runner name, and uh, IP address of it, and uh, this is the setting of the Python, setting up the Python environment. This is the commands it has been used to install it and virtual environments, and integrating the virtual environment, installing it, activating it, and installing the dependencies. We have called the uh, two commands. One is for upgrading the uh, pip, and later it is for the, uh, installing the requirements. And second, we have ran the unit test. So, and at the end, we have deployed the Flask application. So this is how you can integrate your uh, simple uh, Flask application with the GitHub Actions. And this is very basic. This is not the, uh, I, I cannot say that this is the only thing. So there are a bunch of ways we can more go with robust and automated. So I just want to make you more clear and make you more basic understanding. I, I thought to broad this uh, session. So now let's go and hit the uh, this respected uh, URL and we can see the response. And I'm going to copy this URL. I mean, uh, the respected IP address with the port number. I'm going to hit this uh, IP address with the port number. So we can see uh, it's it's showing the URL welcome. So this is the message that we have added into our source code. 
I'm going back here and I'm going to show the app.py and this is see, this is the you are welcome like uh, text we have added. So this is how you can do the deployment. So this is how you can integrate your uh, simple uh, Flask application with the GitHub Actions. And this is very basic. This is not the, uh, I, I cannot say that this is the only thing. So there are a bunch of ways we can more go with robust and automated. So I just want to make you more clear and make you more basic understanding. I, I thought to brought this uh, session. So I hope you like this session. I uh, if you like my explanation, I request you to like, share, subscribe to Code Come Catch You. And if you have any doubts on this explanation, I request you to drop your comments in the comment section. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.